Hi there, I'm Sam Medina, and welcome to the Rift Online Church, building God's kingdom in you. Now today I want to address uh, an issue that was brought up, uh, it's, it's kept popping up because I, I, as I've, I've taught on Facebook and I've taught on Twitter and, and elsewhere online, people come up with questions or they challenge what you're saying based on what they've been taught uh, in whatever segment of the church they subscribe to or belong to or, or particularly like. And one thing that's come up uh, that some people have been teaching is that the works and the practices of the occult and of the New Age movement are the church's stolen property and need to be reclaimed. Uh, that we need to go off the road map, meaning the Bible, to really seek God. And some have gone so far, and there was even a book called My Bible, My Idol, uh, where the author basically makes makes a case where basically he tries to say that those who want to do everything by scripture have made an idol out of the Bible. Now what I've noticed about people who teach along those lines is they always have some kind of teaching, something they want to present to you, something they want you to accept and receive and practice that contradicts what God already said. Is it possible to make an idol out of the Bible? Maybe. But something you got to understand is in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 16 and 17, it clearly states that all Scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished for every good work. Now we have to understand, all scripture is given by inspiration of God. God gave it. God inspired it. It is from Him. We know that for sure. Now, what Bishop Mojo Jojo or you know Apostle Big Shot has to say, we don't always know for sure if that's from God. He may might, might just be giving us his opinion. He might just be trying to sell us something, uh, which is often the case, uh, unfortunately. But we know for sure that all Scripture is given by inspiration of God. Now, if it's given by inspiration of God and it's profitable for doctrine first, it's for, that means teaching, that means, uh, some people will say dogma, and they use dogma as if it's a bad thing. Dogma can be a bad thing if it's your opinion or if it's incorrect. Dogma is not bad if it's the truth. The first purpose for the inspiration of Scripture the first reason why God had it written in the first place is to teach you. If someone is saying, go off the road map, if someone is saying that, uh, that you need to do things differently or you need to go and uh, imitate the practices of occultists, which God expressly forbade, repeatedly kept telling the children of Israel, do not take up the ways of the heathen. And he had all kinds of consequences for doing so. Deuteronomy 18, he lists nine specific abominations committed by the Canaanites, among which were things like witchcraft and spiritism and uh, astrology and all that stuff. Uh, things from what we now call the occult and the New Age movement, which embraces those things. Uh, as one author, Jonathan Welton, uh, says in, uh, in his contribution to the book, The Physics of Heaven, that these things are our signposts to guide us where we need to go. I, wait a minute, we need signposts? Back up for just a second there, man. Uh, no. We don't need signposts. How do we know this? Now, I want to ask, first ask you the question. If Jonathan Welton or anyone else had an opinion and Jesus said something entirely different, who should you believe, Mr. Welton or Mr. Christ? Let's compare the two. Jesus said, He who believes in me, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. He goes on to say that the Spirit of Truth would lead us and guide us in all truth. Does that sound like you need signposts? 
You got the Holy Spirit to guide you. We do not need to look to the occult. We don't need to look to Mr. Aleister Crowley. We don't need to, uh, to look at Madame Blavatsky or any of the other uh, occultist writers. We don't need to look at the Roman Catholic mystics who are into a lot of occultism to guide us or to give us any wisdom or insight uh, regarding the spirit realm. You have Christ in you, the hope of glory. You have the Holy Spirit. So not only is it unnecessary, it's actually contrary to what Jesus Christ himself already said. And since they are two diametrically opposed things, one person is saying, look to the way of the heathen, look to their traditions, follow that, because that's going to give you wisdom, that's going to guide you, it's your signposts. The other one is saying that the spirit of truth will guide you and lead you into all truth. Not some of the truth, not part of it, all truth. Who's lying? Jonathan Welton or Jesus? I'd have to say Jonathan's lying. We don't need to look at any of that stuff to follow God. We don't need to go off the road map. In Deuteronomy 13, and I know a lot of these guys like to say that the Old Testament isn't, isn't relevant. Well, again, Paul said all Scripture is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. You want to be taught righteousness? All Scripture is profitable for it, including Deuteronomy 13, where we are expressly told that God will never send a prophet to contradict him. So if someone is saying something that is the opposite of what God has already said, they are not working for Him. Nobody can serve two masters and they're not serving ours. That's just a fact. That's, that's not a, an opinion on my part. That is going by what the Word of God actually says. And so we got to understand that there's a reason why, why that's in there. And there's a reason why people are trying to say that the Bible is idolatry. Because they want to teach you something that's not from God. A lot of these people are closet occultists. Some of them will even admit they grew up in a house of occultists. And go figure, here they are preaching supposedly the gospel and they're teaching a whole lot of occultism. And telling you that occultism is okay. That, you, that it's, it's a guidepost or a signpost for us to, to know what we should be doing. Let's go off the roadmap of the Bible. There's a reason why they want you to ignore it. Because it, God already told you, don't do this. Not only is it un unnecessary, but it is a direct contradiction to what God has already said. You don't need that stuff. Not at all. And no, you're not going to... You don't go to somebody's grave to suck up their anointing. Again, you got the indwelling of the Holy Spirit inside you. You don't need a dead person's anointing. Now, some people will point to that passage of Scripture where there were some men that were going to bury a man, and they saw some Syrian enemies coming, and of course they're getting ready to bury somebody. They don't have any weapons. They're not in a position to fight anybody. And they're sure not trained soldiers. So they panic, they go to hide, and they throw this guy's body into a grave, and he ends up, his dead body bumps into the bones of Elisha, and he comes back to life. And people say, well, the bones of Elisha still had an anointing on it, so we should go to graves to get anointed. That's not what that passage of Scripture is teaching you. They weren't going there trying to do that. They weren't looking for that. It just happened. That is not an express instruction to go looking to do that. Because if, if you do a little research on this whole grave sucking thing, you'll find its origins are in the occult. And what people are actually getting from graves is not from God. Indeed, it is an, it is an insult and an affront to the grace of God. It's an insult to the Holy Spirit. He already, if you are a true believer in Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit lives in you. Out of your belly is supposed to flow rivers of living water. 
You don't need a dead man's bones. He's already inside you. The hope of glory is in you. You do not need that stuff. I'm Sam Medina. God bless you. And God keep you.